Now, you get one chance at being prepared. Now, what do I mean by you get one chance of being prepared? You get one chance of being prepared before something actually happens and you no longer can prepare. Right now, obviously, it's going to cost you a lot more money if you're going to want to be prepared. You get that one chance. And if something happens that you don't take the necessary precautions to secure the fundamental things that you need for you and your family in any type of emergency, a disaster situation, a catastrophic event, whatever it may be. If you do not have the proper things put aside and put back in case of something majorly happening, what is that going to do for you and your family? Where does that put you and your family at? Does that put you and your family between a rock and a hard spot? I mean, there are so many people that are out here, you know, they have this total belief that, well, we don't have to, you know, there's nothing going on. Nothing's going to really happen. Um, it's nothing but a bunch of um, uh, BS or it's the media blowing everything out of proportions and all this kind of stuff. But what happens when that one situation, that one thing happens and you no longer have that backup, you don't have any of those um, things that you fall back on, your weekly paycheck or, or what happens if you get laid off and these type of things. The world is so turmoil right now with everything that's taking place between Ukraine and Russia the whole European theater over there. Then you got Asia and everything else. You've got what's going on between China with Taiwan. You got the little moron over there in North Korea. Just constantly turning around and threatening whoever. You know, we've we've got our own problems here in the United States. The debt ceiling and, you know, they raised all that and they came to an agreement and all this kind of good stuff. So here's the problem with that. All right. So now they're still saying that they may degrade our financial rating from a triple A down, which I think is just nothing more but BS. But that's just my opinion. You all can read into it what you want. Now, this puts us through to January 1st of what is it? 2025. Now, the feds have said that after this took place so uh, we can catch up and pay our bills and stuff, they're going to drop one trillion dollars in bonds they're going to be dropping and selling off to put money back into the fiscal system so that everything can flow just fine if you people take a little bit of money per week and i did this all right go back and watch the videos i took 10 bucks a week i did it for four weeks for a whole month and did a whole video and you should see the food i've got to put away for $40, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're talking minimal here, $10 a week. So if you could take and you could put a little bit more money into your preparedness, into your preps and everything else. Now, yes, once you start getting out of like your food grade products and you start investing or you're moving into more of your survival type products yes they're more expensive when you really sit back and think about it if you want something bad enough you will figure out a way to save money to put it aside to buy the products that you're looking at we as preppers we have one chance to get this right because here's what happened let's just say you start prepping you've been doing it for let's say two months and you're trying to put away some food and everything else and then you decide, you know what, this isn't working. Um, you know, this is just a waste of my time and money. And you stop doing it. So let's say you had a couple of weeks of food and stuff put up. And then a catastrophic event happens. Whatever. Now, we can speculate on anything. But all of a sudden, there's no power. There's no work. There's no nothing. And you have what you have in your home. You can't get to the bank because you don't have cash on hand because, well, you never finished your prep. You weren't prepared. And then you go to use your card when you went to the store and you see the sign that says, oh, no cards accepted. Cash only. What do you do? You get one chance to get this right, folks. One chance. It's like you're straddling the fence. You have to make your decision. You have to decide whether if you want to prep and be a prepper 
or if you want to just get off the fence and go with society and what they do and you'll be part of the problem when you can't get food for your family you see with this one chance that you do get you have to really sit back and really think about this because you only had this one chance so in this one chance of being prepared you have to start covering all your different bases so you want to sit back and you want to sit there and you want to look at some of this stuff and you want to say hey i'm going to start with food and first aid first so you're going to get your food all put up and everything else your dry goods your canned meats your canned veggies all this kind of great stuff get all that done then you're going to move over to your first aid because after your food your first aid is next to really important because in a catastrophic event happening, emergency, a disaster or something like that, we don't know how long it's going to take before somebody is, the cavalry is going to, you know, riding in to take care of us. So if we can be able to take care of ourselves to a certain point, yes, you're not going to be doing heart surgery. I get it, you know, but if you can take care of, you know, your standard cuts and, and, all this kind of stuff and you don't have to try to go to a hospital a clinic or whatever else because more than likely you're not going to get in so if you can actually do this type of stuff yourself and then once your first aid stuff is complete as you are rotating your stock to your preps and stuff because that's how you have to kind of do this unless you have plenty of money and you're buying all freeze-dried foods and you don't have to worry about it but well, most of us don't have that. So we start off with our canned goods, our dry goods, our dried rice and flour and sugar and all these different types of things. And you stockpile all that kind of stuff. And if you store it correctly, you're going to get a pretty long shelf life out of everything. There are some products that won't last as long. I've done videos on all that kind of stuff. We're not going to go into all that. But then you move from your first aid to your survival type year. Maybe you want to invest into a tent. Maybe you want to invest into backpacks for you and the family. Maybe you want to invest into good, sturdy shoes or boots or something for the family. Because you never know what's going to happen. I mean, if a disaster or a catastrophic event happens or whatever, even if you stay in your home and now you have to walk someplace because, well, you can't drive down the roads because they're just covered in debris and everything else. Okay, well, what are you going to do? Walk down through there with flip-flops on? I mean, come on, let's get realistic here. You're just asking for a problem on top of the problem you're already dealing with. You follow me? What is it that has to wake people up? Does it take a natural disaster, a huge catastrophic event that gets people's light bulbs to go on and say, hey, I should have listened, but now it's too late.